Okay, what we'll do is we will get started. So um, what I will do now is pass you over to my colleague Ash and um, yeah, away we go. Hi everyone. Yep, so it's Ash here. Um, I recognise a few of your names. Alan North, I see you in on the, on the room there. We spoke before. How are you doing? Um, so yeah, welcome to the Sight and Sound Summer School 2019. Um, it's a series of training events which started yesterday. Some of you may have been on that but with our very own Sharon Lyons. She spent some time covering the helpful shortcuts with Windows and JAWS. Um, but we've also got, as Carla mentioned, some events every day this week. So today we've got myself covering the Ruby. Um, tomorrow we have tomorrow, Ruth covering Zoom text. Thursday we've got Stuart exploring the focus braille displays. And on Friday, we'll be hosting the tech surgery, which is pretty much open to, to all questions. Um, so it's every day this week from 3 p.m. to 4.30. Um, how are we going to structure this particular session? We're going to cover, because we've got four different devices, we're going to do one by one. And then after we've covered each one, we'll open up the chat and you can um, ask any questions that I might not have answered during each, each product. Um, so a brief bit about myself. I've worked for Sight and Sound for over 10 years now. Um, my role includes sort of support calls, answering support calls, answering um, technical support emails and repairing some of the products as well. We, we do a lot of in-house repairs here. Um, now the Ruby is probably my favorite of all the products we sell. I think one reason why is because, uh, one reason why I really wanted to get involved in today's session is I've gained quite a good knowledge of the Ruby over the years. Um, so today should be a good opportunity to share a lot of that knowledge with, with you guys. Um, it's, it's also just a, a very simple and easy to use product, which, which I tend to like, and it makes the session today a ton easier. Um, and support calls and that kind of thing. There's nothing really too technical we ever get about the Rubies because um, they're just so simple to use. So that's good. Um, anyway, so today it's about you guys. Thanks for joining us. Um, we'll get into today's session about the Ruby magnifiers. Um, so I hope you can all see on the screen here, um, we've got the four different models laid out. Um, they're very similar, really, that they're all part of the same family of products, but they each have their own sort of differences. So we'll go through um, each differences along the way. I'll show you the um, one at the top left here is the standard Ruby. I'll refer to that as the, the standard one. It's just called the Ruby. And we've got the Ruby HD, the XL HD and the uh, Ruby, Ruby 7. Um, so the Ruby one, which we're going to cover first, I'll just move these out of the way for the moment, bring them back in a bit. So this is the, the standard Ruby or the Ruby one. Um, this has probably been here as long as I have. This has been here for over 10 years, I think. So that's an, in its unchanged format as well. So obviously there's been the newer iterations of the Ruby. Um, but this one has, has stayed pretty much the same for, for over 10 years, which is pretty um, impressive, I think, for a technology product to be around that long um, and that's because it's just easy to use and it's effective at what it does it's very well priced um, especially now it's, it's currently on offer to the end of the year to the 31st of December um, this one's 199 at the moment um, so that's a very very competitive price for, for a handheld magnifier I think um, so yeah let's get started and I'll show you a bit about it um, so there's only four buttons on it that's what I mean about it being very simple just got the power button to turn it on and off. And that's the green and yellow one. We've got the blue color mode button, which changes and cycles between different sort of color modes. Got the yellow magnification button. That one's gonna zoom in. And then the red camera button, which is like a freeze frame. Uh, so if you just turn it on, well, if I take the handle out first, I'll just show you the exterior of it. Uh, so you've got the camera on the back here, and then the handle extends like that. And the, the battery is actually going the handle as well. It just slides open. So um, there are only standard AAA rechargeable batteries that go in here, four, four standard AAA rechargeable batteries. So we recommend that they're of a particular rating. All batteries have like a, a rating called MAH. Um, and these should be at least a thousand. The reason for that being um, they'll just last longer. They'll give you more like the two hours use that you should expect from a Ruby. Um, if you get lower rated batteries, they'll still work, but they'll just they won't last quite as long. So we recommend at least a thousand MAH rated batteries. Okay. And you can get them online, Amazon. We sell them as well. 
Um, if you get them through us, obviously we know we're getting exactly the right batteries and they're fairly priced. I think they're only about a fiver as well. So, um, but yeah, you can get them from the high street. So let's turn it on using the power button on the top left. It's very quick to boot and just get the Freedom Scientific logo and then it's on. Um, and there's no menu system or anything like that, really. It's just if you turn it on, it's ready to go. So it's very straightforward, easy to use. Um, and you, you know, you've got your magnification straight away there. So if I get it onto its natural color mode, that's like the natural color mode. Um, so there's no, no high contrast on that setting. And that's the, the standard mag, mag setting, magnification setting. Um, so if we zoom in first, you'll see it has, I think it's three steps of magnification. And even with the standard color mode, it's, um, you know, you can see how that could be a very useful tool. But if we use the color mode setting, a lot of people like to make it high contrast or change it from, um, from the standard to something like black on white or yellow on black or something. So it's got um, a full set of default color modes built in. That's black on white and just makes it quite a fair bit clearer. White on black, not yellow on blue, yellow on black, and then back to the standard. So they're all built in. Um, the freeze frame button on the bottom right, the red camera button, if you press that, it will literally just pause the screen. So now if I'm moving it around, it's remembering where I was. Um, that can be handy for times, I don't know, if you might be taking a photo of something in a cupboard, uh, like a can of bean, beans or something like that, and you need to see what's written on the side, and need to reach up high, then you can you know, take a snapshot and bring it back down, and uh, enabling you to easily see what's on the can. That's one example anyway. Um, and then you just press that same button again to return to the normal sort of view mode. This is actually the Ruby manual I've got in front of me here. It's just quite clear text. And it's really that easy to use. There, are, there aren't really any menus built into the Ruby, as I mentioned. Um, it's a 4.3 inch screen on this one. So you've got a range of magnification levels from two times to 13 times, but it goes in like steps. So that's like the natural one. And that's about four times. That one's about probably about nine or eight times, and then it's up to the max of 13 times. Um, so that's generally the Ruby. Um, you can turn off the reading lights. Normally they would be on by default. Um, Cause you see, you've got to close it. If you haven't got those on, it can make it very difficult to see what's on the screen. But in some, some circumstances, you may need to turn off the lights to avoid any sort of glare, um, like on a, I don't know if it was like a laminated bit of paper or something like that. It might be a bit difficult to see with the lights on. It's difficult to show you here because this is just a standard bit of paper. But um, yeah, to turn the LED lights on and off, you simply hold the power button. And whilst you're holding that, you tap the red camera button and that just toggles them on and off. The same again, that toggles those reading lights on and off. Okay. Um, I don't think there's too much. The next models that we have have some other neat additions in terms of features in you can um, add like reading lines and reading masks but this one tends to be the more basic of the of the four different models um hence the price it's as i say it's 199 on on promotion at the moment um so yeah if you're interested in one of these now is a, a good time to get one or at least up until the end of the year that's when the offer will finish um i should cover the charging situation so if you bought the unit it's going to include its own charger. It's like a sort of standard DC jack style charger at the top. Um, and then when you plug that in, there's a small LED. I'm not sure how well you can see it on the screen at the moment, but there's a small charging light and I can just demo that a second. So if I plug that in, you'll see the LED light shows up there and it's flashing a green color. Um, there are a different status um, for each each sort of if it's flashing for example that means it's charging um, if it turns like a steady green color that would tell you that it's fully charged um, if it was flashing red I think it does that means the battery's low so if you had it disconnected from the charger and it started flashing red that's telling you it hasn't got too much battery life left you want to get it on charge 
Um, oh, hi, Rob. The, the screen is 4.3 inches on this one, 4.3 inches. Um, and then finally, the LED, the, uh, if it's a still red light, like it's not flashing, it's red, that means there's a charging error. So that may happen. It's not very common, but that might happen if you've got it plugged in. Um, an example of when that could happen actually is if you were, if you connected non-rechargeable batteries into the Ruby, um, that LED light would be would be still red if you had it plugged in because of course it can't charge the rechargeable batteries. So it's just indicating a charging error. Um, also, it can be if you've got some bad batteries or something like that, faulty batteries that are just worn. Then it, um, if they show you the, the still red light, just try replacing the batteries and um, it'll probably go back to the, the flashing green when it's charging. That's, that's what you want to see. Um, which, yeah, just went over there with the batteries. I've already mentioned about them um, being rechargeable. You can put non-rechargeable batteries in there uh, technically, but it would probably be a little bit of a waste if you were desperate, sure, but um, they're going to run out within a couple of hours. Um, so you don't want to be doing that all the time because that would cost you quite a lot. So try and get rechargeable batteries if you can. Um, the warranty, oh, what was that from Moni? Uh, I don't think this one does, but we'll, the next model will we'll show you about the storing the photos, Moni. Um, you can do that on, on the other models. Um, what was I going to say there? With the, with the batteries, yeah, so any, any standard batteries will work, but try and use the rechargeable ones. Um, that really covers the Ruby, I think. Uh, they tend to be quite durable as well. Um, I think the, the handle is, is, is plastic, I mean, but it, it is quite durable. The screen, for example, it's not, um, it's not easily smashed or anything like that. It, it is quite durable in terms of, it's got like a bezel around the edge. I don't know if you can see it, but it's raised against the rest of the screen. Um, so you know how like phones these days, if you drop them on their, on their surface, they're so easily cracked. Um, plus they're like Gorilla Glass and stuff, so that they could just so easily smash. Um, but with this, it's more of like an, an LCD type screen. Um, so, and with that raised bezel, if you were to drop it on its surface, the first thing it's going to land on is, is that plastic bezel. It would only really smash if you actually got something right in the center there. So it, it's quite um, hard to make that happen, but you've also got like a case that comes with it. That's on the screen now. That, that will be included with it, a soft protective case. It's got quite a tough bit on the top to cover the screen as well, whilst it's in your bag or something. Um, we'd consider this one probably the most portable, along with the next one I'll show you, the Ruby HD. Um, they're quite small. Technically, they'd fit in your pocket. I'd say they're a little bit wide to comfortably, comfortably fit in your pocket, but they do technically, they'd easily hit, fit in like a handbag or something very, very comfortably. It's the most portable handheld magnifier that we offer. Um, yeah, so that really about covers it on this particular Ruby. Cool. Um, we're going to structure it so that you can ask any questions after each model. I'm just going to unmute everyone. So if anyone does have any questions, please feel free to jump on now. Hello. If, so if anyone has any questions right now, then feel free to um, fire away, really, on this particular problem. And is the rest of the form filled in with what you need? Leave the chat and type your message in the chat or raise your hand or everyone's unmuted now, so it should be able to do good work. I've only just come in, so I'm afraid I can't be of any help. I'd trouble getting in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Bernadette? Yes, that's me. Hello. <laughs> Um, how, how much did you catch of that one? Did you have any, I've, I've, literally, I've literally just come in about two minutes ago because the code had changed and I, I kept getting the invalid pin, so I had to email somebody to help me. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> but um, was there any particular Ruby that you were interested in yourself or? I've never seen them before, so I've literally just looked at it for the first time in about the two minutes I've just been on. Okay, well, the, ne the next one we're going to cover is essentially the same as this one. It's just um, some more features included, so all the, uh, all the questions will kind of be covered in that next Ruby. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. <laughs>
Does anyone else have any questions about what we've just covered? Oh, let's move on. Moving on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm just going to move this one out of the way. We'll get out the Ruby HD next. Let's put them side by side. You can see they're very similar. They almost look identical with a few different features. Obviously, it's Ruby HD, so it's got a high definition camera on this one. Um, it's essentially a revision of the original Ruby. The main improvement being that it does give you that high def quality, meaning it's clearer, sharper text than the original. Um, but there are some subtle differences in the layout. Um, it's the same size, they're both 4.3 inch screens. But instead of this one, the one we've just covered has four buttons. Uh, this one has six, enabling you to scroll in and out because um, it's got the plus and the minus rather than just the, the plus. Gives you a little bit more freedom. Um, and you can also scroll in and out with the color mode as well, enabling you to go sort of back and forth through the different color options. Um, I think this one's also got the continuous zoom as well, rather, rather than in stages. Um, I'll show you that in a moment. It's got a USB port on the top. So the older one doesn't have that, that's just the DC jack. But this one's got a USB port, and that allows you to save images onto this one. Um, I'll show you that in more detail in a moment as well. The, oh, hang on, let's turn it on and just show you. Move this one out of the way. So you press and hold the power button. So the layout is bottom left. They have moved slightly. Um, this one will turn the device on, this green yellow one on the bottom left. You've got the color mode buttons on the top left, up and down. So they'll cycle between the available color modes. You have the yellow plus minus on the right hand side, which is going to zoom in and out. Then we have the, the bottom right red camera button, which will freeze frame and um, sort of save a picture if you press and hold it. I'll quickly show you that actually first. So if you press and hold the red power button after you've saved a picture, so if you let's start that again, if I'm just over a document and I just press it once, that's just going to keep the image steady on the screen. But if you press and hold that, it shows like a tick. And that means it's saved into the internal memory. So you can then, using the uh, USB port, you can um, transfer that to a computer and um, access those those images on a, on a computer screen. Okay. Um, also, using the camera button again, combined with the power button, if you hold down the power button and press the red button at the same time, it will do the LEDs, it will turn those on and off. Um, much like the last one we just covered, you'd only use that to avoid glare or something on a glossy piece of paper. But sometimes it's better with the LEDs off. By default, the LEDs are on though. Um, this one also includes reading lines and reading masks. So um, you can press and hold the power button together with both the magnification buttons, both of the plus and minus. If you do that, it, sh it brings up that line on the screen. That's like a reading line. Um, once you've got that up, it's going to default to the center of the screen, but you can hold down the power button and either press minus, keep tapping it whilst you're holding down the power button, keep tapping the minus. And that will move that reading line down the screen until it's at a comfortable level for you. And uh, likewise, you can, holding down the power button, just tapping plus, you can move that reading line up there. And then also, and that's going to stay on the screen until you cycle to the next mode, which is the reading mask. So again, you press and hold the power button, and press both the yellow buttons at the same time. It's going to change it to the, the reading masks. And it's a same sort of thing to move the mask sort of up and down um, to increase the distance between, between the masks. So you hold down that power button, and then you're tapping the uh, minus. And that's going to narrow that mask so it's at a comfortable sort of level. You can widen it using the plus. And if you want it back to the normal sort of viewing mode, it's the same again. You just hold down that power button and both buttons, plus and minus, at the same time. So that sort of cycles through every time you press that. Okay. Now you may not notice too much the difference in the quality on the HD compared to the 
model we just showed you, but I can tell you it is much clearer with the high definition camera. It's just the clarity is a lot higher on the text, especially when you're in like the high contrast modes. So I'm just switching now to, um, this is the natural color mode. Um, and then this one's the sort of high contrast view. But over the webcam, it's gonna lose a little bit of that quality, but I'm just gonna show you the different color modes that are built into it. So white and black, uh, yellow on blue, yellow on black, white on blue. And I've added a few in here as well. And that's back to the, the normal sort of color mode. Um, so you can add more colors as well. Uh, so that's, you hold down, there we go, yeah, so to refresh my memory. So if you want to add more color, there's more colors built in, by default it'll have about five. Um, but if you hold down the power button and then press the blue up arrow, you can cycle between all the other various color options. So there's ones in like green on black, and some less common ones, black on green. Um, and you'll notice that every time I cycle through, it's either got a tick or it's, or it's a cleared box. So if it's got a tick, that means it's currently enabled and it's available within the default color modes. Um, so whilst I'm holding down the power button, I press up. If, it's got a, if it hasn't got a tick box in it, I can press the down arrow all while holding down the power button and that will just mark it with a check. Just gonna add a few of these in here. Black on red. And now I've let go of the power button, so I'm back to the normal mode. And because of those, those color modes have been added to the, the bank, these will just be available every time I press the, the up arrow. Blue on black, we added that. We've got a lot more to choose from. Um, so it's, yeah, subtle differences between the HD and the, um, and the standard one. Um, this is also on offer. Every Ruby that we provide at the moment is also on offer. Um, this one's at 275 at the moment, 275. And that's on until the 31st of December this year. So if, if this one appeals to you, um, now's a great time to do it. I'm just going to zoom in. Actually, I forgot to show you the continuous zoom. So if you were here, a moment ago when we covered the standard Ruby, you'd notice that when you press it, it sort of does it in stages and it will go to four times to eight times to 13 times. Whereas this one, it's a continuous zoom. So you just sort of press and hold. You've got a lot more freedom there and you can really get it to the exact magnification level that you want. What does this one go up to? Uh, this one is 13 times again, I believe. I think it's the same magnification level as the last one. Okay. Um, some of the frequently asked questions we might sometimes get, um, if it doesn't seem to turn on, again, the batteries for the Ruby HD, exactly the same as the, the previous one, they're just standard AAA batteries uh, that are rechargeable, sorry. So, um, but we would recommend that they're a rating of at least a thousand MAH. And you can pick those up from ourselves or, or from the high street or online. Just try and use rechargeables. Um, so if it doesn't turn on, try replacing the batteries, first of all, in the handle. Um, also to note the USB I talked about earlier, that is simply to connect it to a computer to transfer any saved images over. It's not to charge it, so that, that won't charge it. You must use the supplied um, AC adapter to charge the Ruby. Um, sometimes people will think the screen's blank or complain about the screen being dull. That can just be that the LED lights have been accidentally disabled. So, um, which was the power button together with the red button. You know, sometimes it will look a bit faint there, but if you, if you toggle that on, it's really gonna brighten it up. So just make sure the lights are, are turned on on the back. It's more obvious if you open the handle out, the two reading lights. Um, and just verify the positioning on the page. Some people might have it on a really high magnification setting. And um, I sort of got it like that. Whereas if, if you just move it around, just verify the correct positioning on the page as well. Um, it's the same battery LED status as the uh, other Ruby that we just discussed. So right next to the DC jack, um, solid green means it's a fully charged battery. You're good to go. If it's flashing green, that means the battery's charging. If it's flashing red, it's just warning you the battery's low. 
And if it's a solid red light, that means a charging problem is, is going on. So you probably want to look at um, making sure the batteries are rechargeable or try replacing the batteries. Um, if there's no LED at all, and that's just not lit, despite you having the charger plugged in, um, obviously just make sure the power adapter is actually connected properly, um, making sure it's on at the wall socket and um, that type of thing. So that's pretty much covers it, I believe, for the Ruby HD, Carla. Uh, yeah, so we've got a question from Rob saying, how long does it charge? Uh, does it take to charge from a dead battery? Good question. Uh, I think I've handily got the manual in front of you. I can tell the official time. I think it's a couple of hours. I know it lasts for a couple of hours. I'll tell you in just a moment, if you bear with me, Rob. Yeah, charges in approximately two hours. So if they were completely flat, it would take you about two hours to charge them up fully all the way. Hope that answers your question, Rob. Does anyone else have any, any questions about this particular one, the Ruby HD? Bernadette, uh, hand yes, raised. same as the other one. Yes. Yes, I did. Um, how, is, how is D magnified? How would it cope if you wanted to read, for example, a tin or a jar? Because they curve round, or the bend, or, or the middle of a book, and it bends in the middle. Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, so. If you were to take a picture of like a can, did you say? I've got an example here. Cheers. A couple of examples. So yeah, if you you can you can certainly do that. I mean, the handle is extendable. I'm not sure how clearly I showed you that. But if you were to extend the handle out, um, I'd say it depends on the surface. So this is a good example actually of the surface being metallic. The LED lights are really going to affect that and make it hard to see. Um, so you, at this point, you'd probably want to disable the LED lights. And I think it'd be a lot clearer. So I'm holding down the power button, press that red one. Yeah. For something like that, the LED lights, it would make it a bit easier to see. Now, this is a reflective like mirror surface. So it's probably not a great example. We've also got quite bright over the Yeah, lights. we have got <laughs> bright lights in here so let me show you on this um, cup of coffee so that's a curved curved um, cup so you know you, you can do that and you can also if you had like a can of beans on the on the shelf there then you can just press that red freeze frame button and that will sort of keep that steady on the screen so you can move that cup away um, and that, that's always on there that's what we find. A lot of people will um, have, have something in their cupboard. They just want to hold it up high, take a quick snapshot of it without actually taking the product down off the shelf. And you've got it there right in front of you then, like ingredients or something, I don't know. D does that answer your question? Uh, yes, yes, thank you. I just had one more. Um, yeah. I, read the, I read the Bible and it's hard to keep the books open. And when you get to the dip in the middle of the book, it's di very difficult to get a magnifying glass to read through that because it just get, goes black on in the middle of the screen. <laughs> How do you do with that? Um, I wonder if we've got an example here. I... There's a uh, book just on that shelf, on the cupboard, sorry. <laughs> that one, yeah. So you should be able to just put the magnifier on the page. This one, I suppose, is not as thick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because, you know, you, it's not always flat on the surface. No. You can extend the handle and you kind of bend it and manipulate it how you want. You mean that? Yes, and then you can't see what you're reading. <laughs> then I have to get a support worker to read it to me. <laughs> so that's probably because I've got, A, the high contrast mode. It can sometimes um, be a high contrast it's really going to capture the shadows if i have it on the natural color mode it doesn't really pick up the shadowing um so much so one word of advice would be try and use it in if you can if you read any really struggling and it's like a really thick book you may have to try and disable the color mode that looks That's pretty cool. yeah because i have to use a white text on black background and then i have a massive problem 
and then also just making sure the LEDs are locked. So I reckon it might be okay. So that yeah. should be the issue. But if I turn the LEDs on, that mm. solves the problem. <clears throat> They're shiny book though, so then we're but a Bible is not going to have the shiny pages, I don't expect. It's not this is glossy. You can tell it's very glossy with the LED lights. Mm. Uh, the Bibles tend to be more of a like a glossiness paper. So I think with the LED lights on, and, uh, it should be okay. Have you actually got one of these then? Really no, good. but I've, I've had similar products before and I've just sort of sent them back because when I put the white text on black background so I can actually read it, I can't see the middle when the book's down, so I've just sort of sent them back. <laughs> you know, it's like, I've never been able to find a way of getting around it really unless someone actually holds the book down for me while I scan over the top. You know, because I say a very, a very thick book is very difficult to hold down with one hand, and right, that's the case really. The book's too thick. <laughs> yeah, I suppose because these you kind of need a, a free hand uh, yeah. <laughs> to hold one down. So, hang on a second. Oh, you can put that on the book. Oh, I see. So, a colleague just handed me like a, a there, there, it was kind of workarounds, I guess. Um, you can put, oh, put something so on the book. Put that over the top of the book. Like that. Like that. And you can use the that separates the page oh, yeah, and you okay. can put the so, magnifier on it. I mean it's not the sort of thing you'd have typically around the house, I guess. But if you have like a clear this is like a clear oh, perspective yeah. of glass. Well, that's not a good idea. Um oh. and that can kind of flatten the page. And oh, then, I see. Um, oh. you have to have the LED lights off because this is a um, glossy sort of perspex piece of glass plastic. They are on. Um, Oh, these are on. Yeah, these yeah. are actually on, and it's still okay. Wow. Mm, sort of work around. Kind of just find it around, I guess. So like a combination of maybe having the reading lights on or off, um, depending on the sort of glossiness of it. Mm. Uh, different colour mode, and um, yeah, maybe trying to pick up something like this. This Perspex glass here. That's a good idea. I might try that. <laughs> yeah, might be worth a try. Might work. Be resisting magnifier. So. Wow. There you go. Thank you. That's brilliant. I'll give it a try. <laughs> cool. Anyone else have any questions about the Ruby HD? I'm in the app server anyway, but it's working locally on the uh, Dynamics Business Central on 40. Yeah. That's only there. Okay. Yep. Cool. Okay. okay. So let's move on to the uh, Ruby HD. Ruby XL HD. Yeah. XL okay. HD. Yeah. So um, next one in line, three out of four is the Ruby XL HD there. Okay. So again, you can tell it's from the same family of products. Um, looks quite similar. The shape is a bit slightly different on this one. Um, it's probably the, the most different of the of the three so far. Um, but the buttons are more or less the same and the screen is, is bigger. Um, in terms of layout, it's, it's very similar, but this model benefits from a larger screen. It's, it's five inches at this one. Um, the range of magnification goes to 14 times. Um, it also has a built-in reading stand. That's the, the main difference here. So this one really gives you the hands-free. You can use that hands-free and you can extend that out. And it also has a built-in handle like the others. Slightly different design. This one kind of folds outwards like that. And it has two settings. That's fully extended. And if you sort of move it halfway, you can have it like that. It could be a bit easier to hold at certain angles. And you can close that, that handle there. Um, so yeah, that's the, the reading stand. Um, just gives you a bit more freedom this than the other models. Um, it's HD, of course, like the other one. Uh, it's, this one's got a built-in lithium battery. That's also one of the differences here. So the past ones that we discussed use AAA rechargeable batteries, whereas this one uses like a, a built-in lithium battery. So you will get a longer battery life with this one, um, up to about three hours of continuous use with this because of the, the better battery that's built in, built into the handle. So you wouldn't really be able to replace this as a user. It's like a special type of battery. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to find that in, in the high street, but you do get longer in terms of battery and it should last longer as well than standard batteries. Um, so yeah, we've got to go turn it on. Um, now you can, there's two ways of turning it on. You can just do it like the, the past ones. So you can just press the power button or uh, once you extend the reading stand, once you flip it open, it will also automatically turn on or uh, when you shut it, 
it's going to power off as well. Okay. So like the last one is just boot straight in. There's no, no real menus or anything as such. You, you're sort of good to go as soon as you turn it on. Um, and very similar to the last one as well, in, in terms of you can, you can add more colors by the same method, you'd hold down the power button. And you can, whilst you're holding that down, just use the, the color mode button to cycle through the various color modes. If you want to pick one out and just enable it, just press the down arrow whilst you're holding down power. So you add all the ones that you want. And as soon as you let go, those are added into the bank. So it's nice that they're all very similar in terms of the way they're used. Um, so this one, yeah, up to the, uh, 14 times magnification, slightly higher than the last one. And it's also continuous zoom rather than in the stages. Because of the bigger screen as well, it um, really seems like it goes in and out a lot more there. That's what shows you the continuous zoom. And it's also got the red camera button to freeze frame. Okay. Um, you can also save pictures because this one's also got the USB in the side of the unit. Again, you wouldn't want to charge it with that USB. You charge it with a supplied AC adapter, um, but you can save an image. To save it, you just hold down that red one. And that will show you that it's, it's saved into the internal memory, allowing you to transfer that to a computer. Can you also view them on your TV? Uh, that's on the, you the can view one. the next one on the TV. Yeah, cool. that one's got a, a, this USB is only for data transfer. Um, you can update firmware as well. Sometimes there are firmware updates available and um, using the USB lead, you can use your computer to download like a firmware file. And uh, once you plug it in, it kind of goes into this firmware update mode. And that's pretty easy to happen though. The ones, if you were to buy one today, they'll always have the latest firmware on. And the firmware updates um, tend to be quite stable at the moment. So I, I don't think you'll see any firmware updates too often. They'll always be up to date. Um, so that kind of covers the, the Ruby XL actually, because they're so similar. Um, there's not too many new features I, I'd go into on each one now. Uh, Ruby 7 might have a couple of other features, but they're just so similar, so um, apart from the design. Can you access your stored images on the device? Uh, you can access your stored images on the device, yes. Um, one second, there's a little trick how to do that. I think it's because you just pressed something and I thought I saw it. Yeah. Um, one moment, guys. Not even I know everything, so I'm just going to put this handy manual in front of us. <laughs> to view the saved images. So yeah, this applies for the past, the last one I showed you, the Ruby HD, um, and as well as this one and the next one. Yeah. Um, the Ruby HD can store about 80 images on it. Um, and you can scroll through the images using the, the blue arrows. So to do that, uh, so I did save one earlier. Um, now if you press and hold the camera button for about six seconds, so instead of three seconds to save an image, this time it, it's six seconds to go into what they call review mode. Okay, so that's one of the images I saved earlier. To scroll through the saved images, um, you simply just use the up and down arrow, the blue, the blue up and down buttons. I've only got one saved at the moment. But, um, and then you press the red button for three seconds to exit and return to live view. And then, as I say, you can, that picture that we just showed you there that was saved on the device, you'd be able to access that on a, on a computer as well. Have I missed anything, Carla, on the Ruby XL? Um, it would be good, actually, while we're talking about it, is to probably just save it in this different colour mode. Oh, yeah, OK. Let's just show you it with a fresh one on screen, OK? So um, if I want to save this image, I'm going to press the camera button just once. So when it's steady on screen, then you press and hold the red camera button for three seconds. That should mean it's saved. So then if I press and hold that for a further six seconds, it 
sorry, that's exited the view. I'll just do that again, press and hold for six seconds. I should expect that it will be in there now. There you go. There we go. Yeah. So it saves in the colour settings yeah. as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, saving the colour settings as well. I think you can even, yeah, you can even zoom in like as that on that saved image. It's not just static, you can still have the freedom of zooming in. Um, though in this mode it is in stages, you won't be able to use a continuous zoom on this. But yeah. So then to exit, just gonna hold the red button for a few seconds to return to the normal view. Okay. Cool. So that is the Ruby XL HD. Now that one's also on offer. They all are, this one's three, uh, 399 until 31st of December. All the prices are excluding VAT. I believe those prices would apply to home users only. Yes. Right, uh, yeah. Um, so home users will, will uh, can apply for that. Uh, does anyone have any questions on the Ruby XL HD? Ruby XL HD singing all dancing is now three hundred and ninety nine pounds. Yeah. That's the one you've got there, isn't it? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I was yeah. That's, yeah, it doesn't seem to have have the leg. Um, the hmm. Kate. Oh yes, it does have the legs. <laughs> Hey, we can hear you. Did you have a question? <laughs> no, no, sorry. No, that's all right. No problem. I'll pop you back on mute. Uh, Bernadette, you've raised your hand. Hello again. Um, I was just wondering, um, I struggle to write my own checks or fill out my own forms. Can you actually write underneath them in real time? Because I've had one once where you were able to write underneath it, but as you wrote, it was so delayed that you couldn't write underneath it. Um, possibly if you held the handle out, but the next one up might be a better. One second. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, so I'm not sure with this one as such, because you haven't got much space behind there. Um, really, I've just got a pen in my hand here, and you, you, the screen kind of gets in the way. I mean, it's technically. <laughs> I don't know what your other one was like. Because of the stand there, you've got some space, do you see? Uh, yeah. there, so you could technically pull that over like a signature um, space and, and do it. But the next one up, the Ruby 7, because it's larger and there's more space at the back, I think you'd probably be better off that one. So check that one out in a, in a minute and see if that more suits it. If you can. I wonder if you could possibly, um, as well, if you pulled the handle out frame down yeah and then held it possibly with hand that you're not yeah, signing you, with I don't, I don't know how comfortable you'd be holding it whilst yeah. you're doing it technically you're possibly, that's maybe the easiest way but you'd have to yeah. hold your hands free and because it's video it will be an instant in yeah. real time yeah i have had them where they've delayed and you're trying to write and you're doing one letter over another letter before you've realized what's happened <laughs> right you need them in Signature. Can you see that? Is that still on? No, there's a picture of phone that keeps coming from in the middle of my screen, so I didn't. Okay. I didn't on there. <laughs> right now. Sorry about that. It's all right. It's, uh, it just keeps coming. Oh, it's gone again. <laughs> is it? Oh, yeah. oh, there we are. We're back. Yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, just I don't, which uh, magnifier do you have at the moment? I wonder if it's one I might have heard of or know the design of. Do you have a magnifier? Oh, sorry, Bernadette, I just <laughs> meet. <laughs> sorry, that's all right. Uh, now I, I, I've, I've given up using them at the moment. I've just got an ordinary glass, but I can't do much with that to be honest. But uh, if, if these are these seem pretty good and they're a little bit pricey for me, but um, I'm just very interested in having a look at them. I did have one that was like a, a mouse and you put it onto a stand and you could put stuff underneath it, but it just, it was so delaying on the screen, I, I sent it back. Oh. It to your television. Okay. Um, if prices, like obviously they are on offer at the moment, we, we also have like a divide by um, where you can spread it over payments. So that may be something to consider. But to okay. Like 0% interest. So, yeah. so, um, so it's three six. 12 months yeah makes it um, a lot more affordable if you spread the cost that way okay cool 
Yeah, thank you very much. No worries, Bernadette. Did anybody else have any questions? Did you want to either want to raise your hand or pop something in the chat group? No? Should we just give it a minute for any other questions come through via chat, maybe? If you are working on shortcuts, it's uh, control and H for the chat or control and Y to raise your hand. Or if you're on a, an iPhone, then you can um, raise, there should be a button on there to raise your hand. Cool, okay. So I think we're all clear. We will have some time at the end. So if you do have any um, questions, whereby you know you haven't quite had a chance to to flag it then um just we'll have a question and answer session at the end as well so back over to you okay so um last but not least is the ruby 7 hd um just move this one out of the way voila so that one's um again similar sort of design in terms of the layout um but it's clearly bigger than the other ones um, and that's because it's a seven inch screen rather than the five inch of the last one and the 4.3 inches of the earlier two models. This one's a seven inch screen. Um, in terms of design as well, it's, so there's no pull out handle on this one. You can't, you can't extend the handle because it's, uh, you've got the built in reading stand. So much like the XL HD, you can just pull it up like that. And that built in reading stand, that will turn it on. But the physical layout will feel familiar to the last ones. Um, you've got the power button, the slightly different position to the last ones, but uh, you've got the power button. And then the two color mode buttons with the up and down to cycle between the color modes. You've got the camera button at the top right. You've got the plus and minus, the, the zoom in and out buttons there. Um, Okay, so there's also a big increase in terms of the magnification level that you can go to. This one takes you all the way to, to 24 times. Get you a bit of paper that you can read there. Um, so let's zoom all the way out. It's a continuous zoom again. So you can really go it's a lot further in, 24 times. There's also a, this one's got the addition of a HDMI port on the, on the side of it, right next to the power, the power input. You've got the USB like the last ones with a bit of LED light, but there's the HDMI port. So the, the Ruby 7 will include a HDMI lead, um, but they're quite common leads to have around a, a house these days as well. You can just connect that to a, an external TV um, and then you can you can magnify your images um, straight to the TV, which can be handy because you've got an even bigger screen then to look at. Some people like to do that when they're doing um, crosswords or something like that, it can be handy. This also gives you a lot more time on the battery, um, double that of the, of the first two, the standard rubies. This is four hours of continuous use because the quality of the battery is it's just bigger because the device is bigger, they can fit a bit of battery in there. So four hours of continuous use, um, can really keep you going for quite quite some time. Um, this one's got the, the cameras are slightly different design as well. Rather than being built into the back, it's kind of you can rotate it. Um, it's got four different positions as well. So just show you each position, each position separately. Um, it's five different positions actually. So the reading position is where it's just facing down on the page like now. And then you've got the what they call the hobby position. When you're using the hobby position, uh, you, wrote, you can rotate the camera manually. So it's just pointing slightly down and at an angle. And that position would allow you to hold objects at a comfortable distance in, in front of the camera. So um, the lady that asked me earlier about the signature, that kind of position there with the hobby angle might be ideal for, uh, for writing a signature because it gives you a bit more space. It's not facing directly down. So I think that might be a good solution for that. Um, also things like uh, knitting and crosswords and things like that, that 
Hobby View can really give you a better, a better look because you've got so much more space there. Uh, the next view would be the distance position. So again, just use your hand, you can rotate it up. And that's obviously just going to face right in front of you. Um, you can rotate the parasites parallel to the open reading stand. And that just gives you a, a hands-free stable platform that you can view items that are far out of reach. So if you're on like a whiteboard or something, maybe, um, that'd be handy to, to, to see. You just can got a whiteboard still there. zoom in on that. Yeah, and you can still zoom in on that. So that can be very handy, the distant viewing. I know that's quite a popular, popular um, view mode to have it on. In a classroom as well, that could be handy. Um, so self view position, you're gonna see my uh, lovely face now. Uh, upside down. Oh no, you go go. So it self corrects when you when you change the um, camera or the selfie camera, as they call it. Um, when in the self view, the camera is rotated around you, so that um, so that yeah, you rotate it around so that it's facing towards you, and then you'll be able to see yourself on the unit screen, or obviously if you've got it plugged in to a TV, you'd see yourself on the monitor. Um, yeah, so that those are the standard position. I think there's one more called the spotting position it's kind of the same as the reading position it's just with the reading stand closed um, it means you can sort of hold it in your hand with the camera facing down it gives you a bit more freedom so I'm just going to put it back in the reading view you'll see when you do that it will automatically orientate the screen to be the correct way show you that once more okay it just turns itself around and then I'll just turn it back around again back to the correct um, orientation. Okay, so we'll just cycle through a few of the features because it's part of the same family. They are more or less the same in terms of how we sort of save the different color modes as well. Um, same technique, you'd hold down that power button whilst pressing up arrow to cycle through the different color modes pressing down on anyone, check or uncheck. So that's all the same. Um, the, what was that mode there? With a the reading line, you can do that. So hold down the power button, you press both magnification buttons at the same time. That they give you your reading mask, the reading line, or back to normal each time you press it. And for any of those that missed it, I'll just quickly show you that reading, how to adjust the reading line in the mask again. So holding down that power button, press the plus and minus. If you want to adjust it down, keep hold of the power button and you just keep tapping the minus to move it down or keep tapping the plus to move, move that up there. That can be helpful. Like if you need to write a signature or something, then that can be handy. And let's change it to the masks. So holding down the power button, press both at the same time, same technique. Just narrow that margin or increase it. And then just return to normal view. And to save the images, it's just the same as well. So I've just tapped the, the red button. That's on the screen now, saved. If I press and hold it, that's now saved to the internal memory. If I press and hold it, I'm just going to return to the normal view. And now if I press and hold for six seconds, I can go into that review mode that we said earlier. I've only got one photo on here, but you can see that's saved. Just go into normal mode, press and hold that for three seconds. Um, so the, the battery on this one is also not, not really user replaceable because it's a built-in lithium one. Um, but because of the quality of them and um, the sort of technology that those batteries are, they last a lot longer than your standard one. So you shouldn't really need to replace those anyway. Um, I think it takes a couple of hours to fully charge the battery. And as I say, you get about four hours of continuous use. So it should really last quite a long time. 
comes with a protective case as well. Just shut that for a moment. Um, that case comes included with the Ruby 7, give you some added protection. And the Ruby 7 is also on sale as well. Oh, sorry, and I just one. I whipped a bit of paper away. Ruby 7 is 499. So that's the, the top of the range one is the Ruby 7, 499. Um, uh, yeah, so that's the last of the Ruby family of products, really. Um, forgive me if I've left anything out that I haven't answered, but because they're so similar, it takes a short amount of time really to demo each one. So, did you go through what the little black button on that one means? Uh, the black button, yeah, let's demo that a second. One second, I'm just going to grab something. I think Carla just raised a question about the black, it's like an analog stick kind of thing in between the plus and minus. And to be honest, I'm not totally sure. Oh, right. so I'm going to find out now. On the saved images. Sorry? You can, can you move around the saved images? Have a look. Maybe if you zoom in. And then, there ah, you yeah, there you go, Carla solved it. So um, the purpose of that black button, if you were in your saved images and you zoomed right in, so this is a, that image I saved a moment ago, zoom right in, and then you can use that to sort of move around that section of the screen. That's what that's for. Can well you, done, Carla. Can you do that on the normal mode as well? Uh, I don't think so. so I'll zoom right in. No, so it's just, no, yeah, it's just, it's just, just the on the same view, one, yeah. that's what I thought. Okay, I'll learn something new there as well. <laughs> oh, um, I think that's pretty much. Yeah, that's all I had for the Ruby 7. Um, again, um, that's the last of the product, so if anyone's got any questions about that particular model, you want to let us know now. I don't know what more it can offer than the magnify on, on my iPad. Everyone is off mute. Does anyone have any questions? Bernadette, back to you. Hello again. Um, the freedom of movement on uh, with the black button on this new one, is that available on the other ones? Because I didn't see that feature on the other ones. No. So when you zoom your, oh, because if you zoomed in when you saved a project, you won't be able to move around it and know what was on the screen. Right, yeah, that, that is exclusive to the Ruby 7, that, that little feature. I think it's because of the increased range of magnification, that's why they've put that there. Right. And I've got another question. How many um, page, how many... How big is the memory? So how much could you save in there? So you could pop it, uh, pop it into a computer. Like if I wanted to, like for example, take a photo of the whole page of the Bible and pop it onto a computer, would that, how many pages would I be able to save in that and look at? Can you store sort of thing? Yeah, how, how much is the storage? I'm just going to find out for you now. Okay. Last <laughs> 80. Um, so if it's not the same, it might be more than 80. It's at least 80, but we'll get an official for you in it. Is that in pages, life. sorry, 80 pages? The last yeah. one, yeah, the last one was 80 pages. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's plenty. You can easily just delete them all if you ever fill that up um, on your computer or something. But if the Ruby 7 doesn't have more, it's at least 80 images. And would this, um, when you pop the Ruby into your computer, would you be able to use it with your normal screen readers or is there any special software that you need to adapt it or? It's all just in, you know how you plug a USB stick into your computer? or an external hard drive, it would just be the same as that. When you plug it into a computer, it acts as an, as an external storage device. So you would just use, you know, uh, Windows Explorer to, to move down it, just like you would a USB stick. Oh, brilliant, okay. Not any complicated menu system, right? it's not like its own program. 105 images. 105 wow. images it stores. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah. Thanks. Yeah. That's all right. Thank you. Cool. Um, so if anyone else had any questions, if you want to drop them in the chat or raise your hand or anything like that, and we can go through. I'm just, I'm not going to unmute everyone just because it's all a little bit, um, I think someone's in a particularly noisy place, which overtakes everything else. Um, so if you, you can do control and Y to raise your hand or control and H to access the chat box. Yeah, we're just going to hang around for a few minutes, guys, just so you can have your time to answer any questions. If you think of anything now, then just throw them at us. And um, in the meantime, just to mention that um, on Friday is our sort of tech surgery. We're doing another one of these from 3 to about 4.30. That's called our Sight and Sound Summer School Tech Surgery. Um, it's basically open to any kind of question. So if you have a product from us or if you're interested in a product from us, um, join us on that Friday at 3 p.m. And um, yeah, there'll be quite a few of us involved in that one as well. So you should know. Yep, Bernadette, go for it. <laughs> um, I was just wondering, uh, you, these recorded sessions, uh, I take it you can have them on podcast so you can listen to the uh, listen again if you've missed out? Yeah, yeah. My lovely colleague Stuart, who also has his hand raised, um, will be dropping them onto the podcast um, and will be popping out an email um, towards the, the early next week, which will have all the links to all the sessions. Um, or if you keep posted on our website, on the blog section, we'll pop them up there as well. Yeah, I didn't know how to access yesterday's. I missed quite a bit yesterday, and I didn't because I've got a hearing impairment. So I don't know how to get into the blog, how to access the live the podcasts. Bernadette, if you want to email me, um, oh, actually, what oh, can, can you see the screen at all? Sorry, can you see the screen? Uh, yes, I can see the papers Perfect. moving. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I'm going to do? If, can you see the chat box? Um. Yes. How do I copy that? Oh. So if you just on that link that's just come up, if you just hover your cursor over it, I'm on a I'm on an uh, an Android phone. It's just disappeared. I tried to grab it, but it disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to find it. Is it? Uh... Try that. What I'll do is I'll, I'll take a snapshot on my phone. That's the only way I can think of doing it. Or you can drop me an email. Um, okay. at Carla Barker at sightandsound.co.uk and I can send you the link by email. Oh, I won't remember that. I'm sorry. I've, I've, I've snapshotted the um, text that you've just sent me on, on the uh, chat screen, if that's okay. Yeah. Unless you put that... Uh, the only way I can access it is to snapshot it. That's no problem at all. Did you email in, Bernadette? Yes, it was me who couldn't get in with the code. <laughs> it was invalid. I was like, oh no, I was panicking. I think... Um, I came back to you, um, so I'll send it over to you now. Yes, yeah, so I did get the code because it, it was a new one, so I put it back in. Yep, no problem. Um, and cool. Um, Stuart. Yeah, thanks, Carla. Uh, well, just to actually say two things. First of all, in relation to the podcast and uh, Burn Death's query, Burn Death, the podcast, as Carla has just mentioned, the link, the podcast yesterday's um, session with Sharon is up and we'll have Ash up this evening. If you have any problems with the podcast, please do get in touch with us. Um, and just, I suppose, a, a very general comment on the Ruby, certainly from, I suppose, knowing of their use over a number of years, their real um, workhorses. People have used them in all sorts of situations, certainly over here in Ireland anyway. Um, very reliable, um, and, and I suppose they, they, they'll kind of do everything. So they're a, um, a bit of an all-rounder, I think. Just wanted to, to make that point. Yeah, I'd agree with that, especially what I said earlier about the Ruby one. It's been around for like as long as I have here, like 10 years. That's the original one. So um, I think that's pretty telling of how sort of popular and effective they are. Cool. Oh, bear with me, we've got someone else. Uh, Sabine? Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, can now. Yeah. Oh, right, thank you. Uh, I missed quite a bit of the, um, the lecture on the Ruby because I, I didn't have the right code, but eventually Stuart emailed me the, the right code. Um, 
Can you briefly explain um, what is the difference between the Ruby and I use an iPad and I use the, the Zoom function on the iPad. So what is the difference? What does the Ruby offer? So um, the, Ru the Ruby itself is a dedicated um, video magnifier. So it's not, it's designed solely for that purpose. Um, right. Obviously the battery life is on an iPad, you're doing lots of different things on an iPad and you're zooming in and zooming out and going on Candy Crush or whatever you use or, mm -hmm. or Twitter, you know, and all of that stuff. So by using that zoom function, you're also with everything else that's going on, you're draining the battery. Um, right. And the thing with the iPad as well is that you have to be um, totally parallel. The, the iPad has to be parallel to the text to read it properly. Um, right. well, you see on the Ruby 7 now it's got a stand you can move the camera around so if you're you know you don't have to hold it directly over a page and um, if you hold the iPad slightly skew on a page then you're only going to get part of it um, and things like that I mean you can't you can use it if you have an iPad but these are dedicated um, pieces of equipment that are specifically there for this reason um, right. your magnification on the um, it's a lot easier. You've got masking lines as well, which you won't have on the iPad. So if you are using it to read a book or a Bible and you want to, you know, stay on your line, you've got the mark, you've got the dedicated masks, maskings, and um, for those who need to read in a different contrast. So um, some people prefer to read yellow on black or yes, yes, so on and so forth. You've then got all of those preset into these machines and um, which just makes it a lot easier. Ah, okay, because my biggest problem is my granddaughter continuously asks me to read her books and yeah. I can't. So I, I, I just, I was very interested and maybe the Ruby, you know, I might be able to read books to her using that yeah. device. So with the iPad as well, to use the iPad to read a book, you have to have the right lighting. Yes, uh, it, it doesn't work. Yeah, so I mean, you can always sort of put it on the camera and zoom in, but it's a little bit clumsy. Whereas at least with these, once you've got your lighting set and you, you can just run it over the page of the book, um, or you can, you know, in this instance on the Ruby 7, you could take a photo with a page and zoom in and navigate around that page and that sort of thing. That's probably going to be a better solution yes. than, than using an iPad. Okay, well, that's great. So sorry, I, I, I missed <laughs> quite a bit, but I was very interested. As I said, I'm, I'm dying to read uh, uh, some books and, and I find it very difficult. No, that's no problem. So what we'll be doing as well is um, all of these sessions will be up on um, our Audio Boom channel, which I've just put the link onto in the chat. Um, but the videos will also be available on our YouTube early next week. So you can actually watch back the videos um for the for the bits and pieces that you missed um mm -hmm. and then um yeah you can give us a call on um oh one six oh four seven nine eight oh seven oh and speak to our um sales team or drop us an email at sales at site and sound .co .uk. Um, you've got Stuart's contact details and my contact details as well so um, if you have got any further questions then please just feel free to drop us an email and we'll answer it as best we can okay well thank you very much indeed that's all right no problem yeah thank you was there anybody else that had any questions um if I am just going to unmute everyone. Rob, I think it's you that's in the really, really noisy surroundings, but I'm just going to unmute everyone to give them the opportunity if they can't do it themselves. Bear with me. Hello. So everyone, apart from a couple of people um, who I think have set themselves on mute, um, should be... Um, so it... Um, please let us know or drop them in the chat, whatever works best for you. No? Okay. Well, what, um, oh, Molly, thank you very much. I'm glad you found it useful. Um, Thanks, Molly. 
well, obviously it wasn't me, it was all my colleague Ash. Um, but if you do have any other questions, um, either join our surgery on Friday. Again, it's three till about half past four. Um, or you can contact um, myself at Carla, so that's C-A-R-L-A dot Barker, B-A-R-K-E-R, um, at sightandsound.co.uk. Um, just a couple of things as well. We are across social media, so if you if you are on there, um, then give us a shout and um, you know follow us. We're on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Just search Sight and Sound Technology, and you'll find us. Um, one of the other things as well is, is there anything else that you want us to do these sessions on? Um, I mean, this one covers Ruby magnifiers. We've got some more on this week um, around JAWS and Zoom text. Um, so we've got Zoom text on tomorrow, um, Braille displays on Thursday, and then the surgery on Friday. But if there's anything else particularly, you know, that you want any more information, sessions, workshops on, um, then yeah. Just give us a shout. We're all up for it. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thanks for joining us. Bye.